Welcome to the part uh, <coughs> three of the International Christian University Linguistic Colloquium, as known as ICU Link, that is organized with the theme uh, uh, or with the theme of uh, multiple areas of linguistics. I'm Sungun Ni from International Christian University. This event is co-organized with uh, Professor Tomoyuki Yoshida and Yoko Mizuda. Today, we have two exciting talks by Professor Rajesh Bhatt from University of Massachusetts at Amherst and uh, Michael Yoshitaka Orwin, as known as Micho from National University of Singapore. Before the first talk, let me introduce the first speaker, uh, Professor Rajesh Bhatt, uh, who is from University of Massachusetts. He received his PhD in 1999 from the University of Pennsylvania, and his research interests involved the sem sem syntax semantics interface, the comparative syntax of modern Indo-Aryan languages, and trio joining grammars. Uh, he has uh, written uh, about interaction of aspects and modality, comparatives and implicit arguments. And uh, he has also worked on long distance agreement and closest conjunct agreement and correlative constructions. Uh, he was part of the team that built the NSF funded Hindi Urdu Tree Bank as well. His work appeared in Natural Language and Linguistic Theory, Theoretical Linguistics and Journal of Comparative Germanic Linguistics among other journals. Today, Rajas will talk about crossover asymmetries based on research with Stefan Kine. Um, and welcome to ICU Link. Thank you. Thank you for uh, asking me to speak. I'm very excited about this. And let me uh, share my screen. So I will stop other people's sharing. Here we go. OK, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. OK. OK, so what I want to talk about is um, a certain kind of asymmetry between uh, different kinds of crossover. And I'll, I'll tell you why this is an asymmetry. So let's start first with what is crossover, OK? So crossover, as the name suggests, crossover stands for the idea that it makes reference to movement, okay? Something is moving and then you have something in between. You have, let's say the thing in between is a pronoun and the movement is crossing this pronoun, okay? So this is happening. And now the question is once you have moved over this pronoun and let's say you're in a C commanding position, then all else being the same, you might expect that the thing that has moved is able to bind the pronoun, okay? Because, so let's step back a second and think about when can a quantifier bind a pronoun, okay? Standardly, what we would, what we say is something like, oh, maybe there must be C command, and maybe it shouldn't be too close to the pronoun because otherwise you would get principal B effects. But otherwise that should be all, that should be it. But that is not it. And this is, I think like it's a major discovery that people uh, realized way, way back in 1971, this is postal 1971. What he noted was that when something moves over a pronoun, then in some situations, it's not actually able to bind that pronoun. Okay, so let's look at uh, some uh, cases. So if you have some, a sentence like, who do, who, do, who do they like? This can mean, do you want to know the names of the people that these people like? What it cannot mean is something like, please give me the names of the people such that they like themselves. Or let me change uh, uh, the sentence slightly. Who does he think is intelligent? Okay, if you say who does he think is intelligent, it can mean many things, but it cannot mean give me the names of the people such that they think that they are intelligent. And to appreciate that this meaning is actually a completely reasonable meaning, consider the minimally different sentence, who thinks he's intelligent? Okay, I asked, there's a bunch of people here and I asked people, who thinks he's intelligent? So that, that people can, I, you can reply and say, I think I'm intelligent, okay? So that's the particular interpretation that we are interested in. And what people had noticed is that when you have 
movement that crosses over a pronoun, then depending upon the kind of movement, you may or you may not be able to bind a pronoun. So when you have a bar movement, and right now, like the classic instance of a bar movement is WH movement, it doesn't matter what kind of, uh, whether it's strong crossover or weak crossover, you, you cannot get binding. So who does their mother like cannot mean, give me the names of the people such that their mother likes them. So this is, before I go forward, I should sort of, let me tease these two things apart. Let me tease apart strong crossover from weak crossover. Okay, so the thing that's common to both is you have movement, okay, and a pronoun in between. So this is crossover, and this ca this characterization carries over to uh, strong crossover and weak crossover. The difference is that in strong crossover, the pronoun C commands the trace. Okay, in weak crossover, the pronoun does not C command the trace. It's embedded in between. So in who does their mother like, there does not see command the trace, but in who do they like, they see commands the trace, okay? So strong crossover, weak crossover. So in English, strong crossover, the interesting fact is that in English, it doesn't matter whether you have strong crossover or weak crossover, they travel together. So you get them together uh, with a bar movement, a bar movement is subject to strong crossover as well as weak crossover. And then there's another kind of movement, which is a bar movement. And a bar movement has neither of them, okay? So let's compare uh, strong crossover and weak crossover in the context of the two kinds of movement. So let's look at 3A. Every girl seems to herself to be a genius. This every girl starts off in this location, moves up here, and from this location, it's able to bind a reflexive here, okay? It can't bind a pronoun, but that's a little bit orthogonal because that would be subject to principle B. In contrast, as we've already seen, 3B is bad, okay? And now let's look at V crossover. Every girl seemed to her dad to be a genius. So you take every girl, move it over to her dad, and every girl is able to bind her. Okay, so in English, the nice, what the nice distinction that we see is a movement is subject to neither weak crossover nor strong crossover. A bar movement is subject to strong crossover and weak crossover. Okay, so it's, I think a, a good bit of the field, what, what, has, what the field has done is people have looked at this and said, okay, we want to derive, we want to give both weak crossover and strong crossover the same kind of explanation. And that would explain why a movement is subject to neither and a bar movement is subject to both. What our goal is to say, no, you don't want to lump the two together, okay? So our goal is going to, the, our goal is to bring, tease these apart and to try and develop a better understanding of why these two effects arise. And the way we are going to do this is, we're going to look at, we're going to look at Hindi. Hindi is a language with scrambling. And what we're going to show is that at least when you're looking at local scrambling in Hindi, strong crossover and weak crossover come apart. And I'm going to, so basically scrambling is not subject to weak crossover. That is, it does weak crossover amnesty. This is in a way the best known fact about scrambling. I think when people in the 80s started studying scrambling, be it in Japanese or in Hindi, people, this was the first thing that they noted that scrambling is not subject to secondary to V crossover. And in that sense, people said, oh, look, scrambling is like English A movement. This part, the second part, we believe to be new or relatively new, uh, which is that scrambling is subject to strong crossover. 
So now what the, the reason scrambling becomes interesting is that it complicates the picture, right? We saw when we were talking about uh, A movement versus A bar movement, that A movement was not subject to either strong crossover or weak crossover, while A bar movement is subject to both. And now what we will see is a situation where you're subject to one, but not the other, okay? So what this is going to, what this is going to uh, short, what this tells us is that you don't want to follow a, a range of proposals which try to basically put together weak crossover and strong crossover. Okay, so this there there's a history of proposals. There is uh, Chomsky's leftness condition, uh, von Riemsdick and Williams empty structure account, Reinhardt's account, and Sapphire's independence principle. All of these things, what they're trying to do is to basically guess, give the same explanation for strong crossover and weak crossover. What we want to say is this is misguided. This is completely misguided because what's going on is strong crossover and weak crossover are responding to different features of movement. So strong crossover cares, takes, is worried about the launching site and weak crossover is related to the landing site. So what's happening in Hindi scrambling is that you have the kind of launching site which causes strong crossover, but you have the kind of landing site which allows for binding, okay? And you might, I, in the interests of time, I won't speak, say so much about weak crossover, but I will say something about SCO, about uh, strong crossover, which following the actually a very popular account, we will, we will continue to say that strong crossover is an instance of condition C connectivity. But instead of just stipulating that, which is what the traditional account has done, what we will try to do is we will try to derive it. We will try to derive the amount of structure in the launching site. We will try to connect it to case and nominal licensing. And this provide, this is basically couched in terms of a proposal by Shoichi Takahashi and Sarah Halsey called wholesale late merge. So to the extent that we are able to extend uh, wholesale late merge to explain our uh, the new data, it provides support for Takahashi and Halsey's account. Okay. So let me just uh, uh, repeat uh, to say uh, uh, what special is uh, about uh, scrambling, at least in Hindi, we, we are not making claims about scrambling in general, is that the TP internal location of the landing site is such that it allows for WCO obviation. And we have a particular proposal about why this is so. On the other hand, what we say is because scrambling is post case, at least in Hindi, the things that you scramble have already received case. You're not moving to get case. Case is all done and then you're scrambling. So because of that, what we say is because scrambling applies to a case marked DP, following the logic sketched by uh, Takahashi and Halsey, we get condition C connectivity, okay? And because you get condition C connectivity, because actually that's one step removed, because of case marking, you, you're, you have a bigger structure downstairs. And this bigger structure leads to condition C connectivity. And that in turn leads to strong crossover because strong crossover is basically a condition C effect. Okay. So in this sense, scrambling is Hindi Urdu scrambling is going to pattern with English A bar movement. And that's that's the core idea. Okay. And so the sum total is that the properties of scrambling in Hindi cannot be reduced to it being either A or A bar movement. If you are familiar with the traditional literature, the classic literature on, uh, a, uh, on scrambling. So for example, if you look back at classic papers by Mahajan, by Saito, by other people, the question they were obsessed with at that point by Webel Huth also was, uh, 
what to do with scrambling? Is it A movement? Is it A bar movement? And one kind of answer that Anup Mahajan gave, which became kind of popular was that it's one, it can be either, but at any given instance of it is just one. Okay. We, our answer is different. What we are saying is, no, it is fundamentally different. It is a fundamentally different kind of movement, which is half, depending upon which end you look at it, it's kind of like one of those mythical beasts, you know, so it's like one part, the lower part of it is a bar movement and the higher part of it looks like a has a properties, the landing site has a properties, the launching site has a bar properties. So in that sense, it is a third movement type, but what we hope, uh, uh, the way we make peace with that is that we don't have to stipulate the properties that it we we want to say that these properties uh, follow from other independent properties of scrambling and uh, so by breaking down the concepts of a and a bar movement into smaller pieces we hope to obtain a more accurate picture of the ways in which movement types differ and we think this is good because, you know, like in the 80s, going up until the early 90s, people, A bar movement, the distinction between A and A bar movement was a good distinction, right? Like it correlated with a bunch of other things. Now, it's almost a bit of an embarrassment, right? Like it's there, we know it exists. But why? It's, it seems to have come down to like a, a list of things. Okay, if you do these things, you're A, you do those things, you're A bar. But we don't really have an understanding of why those distinctions exist. So there is no joy in some sense in saying, hey, we want to keep to the core distinction of A and A bar movement. A, the, the A and A bar distinction, given our current assumptions, really should not be a primitive. So we want to break A and A bar down anyways. And what we are saying is that's a good thing because if you break it down anyways, then we then you find a way, a natural way to locate the Hindi data. Okay, that's the big picture. Now let's look at uh, the actual data from Hindi. Okay, so let's start with V crossover. Okay, um, so I'll uh, do this slowly. Uh, I would encourage you at least some of these examples, you might be able to replicate them readily in Japanese. Uh, so first we start with his sister scolded every boy. This is 7a. Uski behen ne har ladke ko danta. Okay, this is a perfectly grammatical sentence, but I have never met a Hindi speaker who says that this sentence can make, have the quantifier bind the pronoun. This is a very, very strong judgment. Okay. However, there is a very easy way to get the quantifier bind the pronoun, which is to just scramble to put the har larke ko, the quantifier, before the subject. Har larke ko uski behen ne data. So basically what this means is every boy was scolded by his sister, but this is not a passive. You've just rearranged the elements and binding becomes possible. Okay, so this is we crossover. And what we see is uh, local scrambling amnesties we crossover. Okay, this is an extremely well-known fact about scrambling. In a way, what I would say is if you have a movement operation which does not do this, then I would just say, that, okay, whatever you have, it's not scrambling. Okay. In fact, I think at this point, V crossover amnesty is the signature property of scrambling. Like if, if you don't do this, then maybe your operation is just different. It doesn't fit into what most other people would call scrambling or at least for local scrambling. So now we do strong crossover. Okay, so now we do Had Lalkeko Usne Dekha. Okay. 
एंड दिस इज बैड और हर लड़के को अपने आप ने देखा दिस इज ऑल्सो बैड सो दिस यू माइट से ओ नाइस दिस इज स्ट्रॉन्ग क्रॉस ओवर द प्रॉब्लम इज दिस इज नॉट स्ट्रॉन्ग क्रॉस ओवर because this could be bad for many reasons so for one thing hindi reflexives are subject oriented so the this apne aapne could not be bound by anything other than a subject and since this is the subject this reflexive is doomed okay but then what about this why can't this bind uh, this pronoun here and the answer is principle b this is you cannot we know that it can bind from this location so and so if it did bind this you would end up with a principal b violation so what we are going to do is we are going to do something more complex so we are going to in a way shift everything one step up so instead of talking about cross we crossover and strong crossover we will talk about secondary we crossover and secondary strong crossover okay what is that let's look at this okay so what we what what we're going to show you is that in hindi possessors can bind out of the dps that contain them so 9a is a good sentence with binding har ladke ki behan ne usko daata and 9b is also good har ladke ki behan ne uske dost ko daata so what we're doing is we are we we embedded the quantifier inside um a dp so that we this does not directly see command this okay but however you want to do binding out by possessors uh this is able to bind out of this dp and it's able to do it in 9a and 9b okay but it's worth noting so you might say oh what this is telling us is that this possessor actually moves out into the clause and from there it's in a c commanding position and it's binding it but that's not that's unlikely to be what's going on because if that was the case you would expect principal b effects but uh, this is actually fine ram ki behan ne use dekha where ram can be coreferential with use and suggesting that there is these are not in the same domain they count in the same domain but binding is possible from here okay uh i'm going to skip the fact that there's no possessor raising you can just take this for granted okay so now what we are going to do is what we what i'm going to show you is that this is a slightly complicated sentence har ladke ki behan ko uske dost ne daata this is fine here what we are doing is we have a quantifier which is embedded inside a dp it moves over this and then from this location it's able to see command outside and bind this pronoun okay so this is fine and if you stare at this the the one way of making sense of secondary we crossover is to basically you can think of this portion as being pipe piped so what you can do is you can just undo the pipe piping and then you have every boys his friend scolded ex's sister okay and this is this is now a we crossover configuration and what you see is there is no problem it goes fine but if you say har ladke ki behan ko usne daata this is just completely bad with this binding and again the way to make sense of this is to say okay i'm just going to keep this portion up here i'm going to reconstruct the rest of the dp and put it down below okay and then what you're going to get is usne he scolded ex sister okay and then what you're trying to do is this he is trying to be coref your bind your coindexing this he with every, with the trace of every boy and that would be bad okay so that but that is give making a particular assumption that in this case you are actually reconstructing this below so here is the puzzle right 
in 13, it looks like you're not actually necessarily reconstructing anything because you're able to bind from above. But in 14, in order to get the SSCO effect, it looks like you have to reconstruct. So what, why is this the case, right? Like given the classic story, right? The classic story, uh, for, which is built upon English where we say, hey, strong crossover and weak crossover go hand in hand. These two things should go together, but they don't go together. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the basic puzzle, okay? So let me just walk you because this is tricky. So let's do this step by step. We know what we, we know that scrambling may feed pronominal binding. This is also known as the weak crossover amnesty property of scrambling. We also know that possessors may bind outside of the host DP in the absence of movement and also after movement. So possessors are able to bind out, that's fine. And then in three, the trace is not co-indexed. Uh, this is 14, this trace is not co-indexed with this pronoun. So there is no, obvious way to derive why 15 should be bad. The only way to derive the badness of 15 is to say, hey, something, this is not the representation you should be looking at. You should be looking at a different representation where you have reconstructed part of this DP to a lower location, okay? So that's, that's the question, why? Why is it being, what we are learning suddenly is that scrambling needs to have a richer trace than you might have expected. You might have expected that scrambling, if, if scrambling is like uh, a movement in English, we know a famous fact about a movement in English is that it doesn't really reconstruct for condition C purposes. So it has the ability to leave behind a very tiny trace. However, what we're seeing here is, well, that can't be the case because if it was able to leave behind a tiny trace, you would not get the badness of 14. So, so there's a tension here, right? Which is we somehow we want to leave a large trace. Okay, so this is our uh, situation. Um, just uh, um, so that we are familiar with this, uh, you have a pronoun and uh, you can embed the pronoun or not embed the pronoun. If you don't embed the pronoun, you get secondary, you get strong crossover. If you embed the pronoun, you get weak crossover, okay? And then the QP binder can be unembedded itself, in which case you will have primary strong crossover and primary weak crossover, or it can be embedded and you will have secondary strong crossover and secondary weak crossover. And in fact, to my mind, you know, like one of the things that people have been curious about, like reconstruction plays an important role in syntactic theory. And unfortunately, if you ever tried to teach condition C reconstruction data in your classes, and if you have native speakers, they complain often because they don't always get the judgments. But the one place where people are very robust is when it comes to secondary crossover and secondary weak crossover. And in these cases, the reconstruction data is completely robust, which is people who get primary strong crossover also get secondary strong crossover. And and people who get primary weak crossover also get secondary weak crossover. And in fact, at least uh, as far as I know, everyone gets strong crossover. There's some variability with weak crossover, but strong crossover is something that everyone gets. Okay, so, okay. So this is, uh, I also sort of want to point out one thing. So I've uh, told you, I've, we've given you all of the data with uh, every, but you can also set it up with only, only phrases, which also are quantificational. And one more point, which is that uh, in, I already showed you that a movement, um, 
A movement uh, and A bar movement displayed strong crossover and weak crossover. Uh, but what I want to show you is that uh, they also display secondary strong crossover and secondary weak crossover, okay, or not. So A bar movement displays secondary strong crossover, whose mother does he admire, cannot mean give me the names of the people such that they admire their mother. So it cannot mean something like who admires his mother. It has no meaning like that, right? On the other hand, 24A is perfectly fine with binding. Every boy's mother seems to him to be a genius. That's fine. And now we do the weak crossover. Whose mother do his friends admire? Okay. This again lacks a bound reading. On the other hand, every boy's mother seems to his friends to be a genius is fine. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing weak crossover or strong crossover, they are traveling together. Okay. So they are traveling together and going secondary does not make a difference. What, we, what we've seen in Hindi, and so now this is shown here, the data is uh, shown here. In English movement, you English A movement is subject to neither weak crossover, strong crossover. English A bar movement is subject to weak crossover and strong crossover. And Hindi local scrambling is sub not subject to weak crossover, but is subject to strong crossover. Okay, so let's uh, let's see uh, how uh, this works. So the question is, um, we have a number of questions. One of them is what causes secondary strong crossover? How do we explain the differences between weak crossover and strong crossover? And how does scrambling relate to the AA bar distinction? Okay, so our oh, the big, the one thing that I want you to take from this talk is that despite what people might tell you or you might get from textbooks, uh, strong crossover and weak crossover do not travel, necessarily travel together. They are independent principles, they are independent phenomena, which for various reasons travel together in English. But they are conceptually independent processes. They don't have to go together, okay? And once we know this, we can see what we're going to say is secondary strong crossover is an instance of condition C connectivity. And their different proper, they, their properties come from different places. We crossover correlates with where you land. Strong crossover is correlated with how much material you leave behind, okay? And so uh, let me walk you through uh, the idea of uh, why strong crossover leaves behind a bigger trace. Here, uh, there is this uh, observation, which we will get into a little bit later from um, uh, Takahashi and Halsey, where they basically say, look, uh, the restrictor of a noun phrase has to be introduced before the case, before case comes in. Once case comes in, then the restrictor needs to be there. So you can delay the restrictor until case comes in, but, but no later. Since A bar movement follows case assignment, A bar movement always involves the NP restrictor. So you cannot delay the NP rest, you cannot introduce it at the landing site. And that's why A bar movement in English is subject to condition C, uh, condition C reconstruction. A movement, you can delay the insertion of the NP restrictor, you can just move something like a determiner. And consequently that is not subject to uh, condition C uh, reconstruction. So that's, that's, that's the, that's why these two things come apart. What makes scrambling special is that scrambling is like A bar movement in certain ways. It's like A bar English A bar movement in that it takes place after a case has happened. So consequently, you need 
you you have to insert the NP structure. The entire NP structure has to be there. And once the entire NP structure is there, that leads to your getting to your being subject to principal CFX. Okay, and hence strong crossover. On the other hand, what makes scrambling special, and this will not come as a surprise to you, is that scrambling, unlike a bar movement, at least local scrambling, does not target a CP projection. Okay, it targets a lower projection. It it goes a little bit lower. And those sites, it seems, and this part still remains a stipulation, but at least it's connected to the landing site. That certain kind of, from you can bind from certain kinds of landing sites, but not from certain other kinds. So spec CP is a position from which you cannot bind. Spec TP, if you're adjoined to spec TP, you can still bind from that location. So it's this particular combination of effects you already got in case, so you have to recon. So you have to have a rich copy, which leads to condition C. But you're not going to spec CP, so you can bind. Okay, and this is uh, this is the combination. So now I think I'm. I don't have that much more time. I'm ju just going to show you a few highlights from the handout. So this is going to go a little bit quickly. Um, one point that I want to make is uh, everything that I've said has been about short scrambling. And short scrambling is a scrambling that takes place within a finite clause. It doesn't go outside of a finite clause. Once you grow outside of finite clauses, then at least in Hindi, all bets are off or rather things get dull. It's just like English A bar movement. You don't you, you don't get fee crossover amnesty, and you also so you what, things go weak crossover and strong crossover start traveling together again. So nothing uh, fancy. So this is shown in the table here. It's the local scrambling that's kind of exciting because it's in between, and then the long scrambling is just like English A bar movement. Okay. So I'm gonna skip this portion. Okay, then, um, yeah, here I have the Takahashi and Halsey's proposal for uh, wholesale late merge. Um, I'm going to now uh, just go to the conclusions actually, uh, because. Yeah, so, uh, this is, this is where I want to uh, uh, take you. Uh, I want to stop at this point. So this is where uh, we are. Uh, basically, uh, you have English A movement whose landing site is TP. You have English A bar movement whose landing site is CP. And then you have Hindi local scrambling whose landing site is TP, okay? So because, and we are connecting the landing site with binding and that we connect with the, the, the insertion of this binding operator, which we get from uh, Daniel Buring's work, okay? So this, this part explains the binding. So basically, since you can insert this operator, you don't get V crossover effects. English A bar movement, you cannot insert this operator and you get, we crossover effects, okay? So this is all landing site. Now we come here, okay? So now we start here. Uh, English A movement, we know can feed case. Hindi local scrambling does not feed case and English A bar movement does not feed case, okay? So this is, this is a fact we know. Combine this with Takahashi and Halsey and what this means is that you will in these cases, you have to have an enriched trace. You have to have a big trace. Here, you don't have to have a big trace. Since you have to have a big trace, you're going to get connectivity effects, condition C connectivity effects here, but not here, okay? And since you get connectivity effects, you also get strong crossover. 
Okay, so really the interesting properties. So instead of now just talking about movement in the abstract, the interesting things really are the causal factors are this and this. Okay, does it feed case? Does it not feed case? And where does it go? And so now I leave you with a, a kind of a puzzle, right? We've we've created these three kinds of movement, right? So English A movement says, I'm not subject to SCO, I'm not subject to WCO. English A bar movement says, I'm subject to both. Hindi local scrambling says, I'm not subject to weak crossover, but I am subject to strong crossover. Could you have a language which flipped Hindi? Okay, so this would be a language where, uh, you land in spec CP, that means, and so that means that you can't bind, but you feed case assignment. We are not sure that such a language exists, but maybe Mongolian described in uh, work by Fong 2019 might be such a language, but we, we still have not quite figured out whether we want to ban such a language, we want to derive uh, whether there are some other principles that we don't fully understand right now, which block that, or whether there is a, a, a welcome possibility that is attested in uh, uh, some, some language. Okay, so uh, this, uh, there's much more here, but uh, I will stop because I was told I should speak for about 40 minutes or so. So I will stop sharing here. And please uh, feel free to ask me just anything. I, I realize this has gone extremely fast. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk and people are applauding. Uh, uh, please uh, send me your name and affiliation uh, using the chat function. And then I will uh, uh, give you opportunities to ask questions and comments. Uh, the first question comes from uh, Mitchell, uh, National University of Singapore. Please go ahead, unmute yourself. And if you want, you can show your face and ask questions. Hi, Rajesh, thank you so much for this. Um, so um, I think because we got this sort of uh, high level overview of this work, mm -hmm. I have to ask about the relation of your proposal now, what you're thinking about to sort of two kinds of questions or bodies of work. So, so one is um, the relationship of this to um, the view that, for example, weak crossover might be due to uh, certain chains being interpreted in a fundamentally different way, for example, through choice functions like in Zauerland and Royce's work and mm -hmm. like how that relates to um, I, you know, it, because of the time, I guess you didn't have a chance to really tell us exactly how you want to constrain the beta operator, right? So, so I'm wondering how, how, how those might be related. And then uh, just to, just to raise this, um, the other family of questions is, so you showed us crucially in your examples that um, scrambling in Hindi can in, involve pied piping. And I'm wondering whether you're thinking of that as a sort of Keblerian approach where, you know, you're moving some kind of particle phrase um, and, uh, you know, what, and I wonder how that relates to, you know, like Pied Piping, we also think of as a traditionally A-bar diagnostic, right? So that sort of optionality of the size of how much you move also seems to be, tend to be an A-bar rather than A property. And I'm wondering if how that lines up with the way that we in this world might think about the AA bar distinction. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the choice function analysis is actually very attractive, but uh, we've not been, we've not been able to work it out because uh, we have a footnote on page 10 of our handout where we say that uh, the late merge system, uh, we, I think actually you have some thoughts about this in a handout, but uh, which is we've not been able to understand how to uh, put the 
to interpret the NP restrictor down below and still do the choice function system. So that's why we did not, uh, at first we thought of doing it in the Royce style, but then that's why we did not uh, go that way and we went uh, the, uh, the Buring route. This other point that you raised, right, which is in some, how deep, like, I mean, you know, it may be, this was a bit glib on our part, which was we said, oh yeah, you know, landing site, but then that's still a stipulation, right? And why is it that, so in, in a way, uh, the explanation that we have is, well, certain landing sites, you can introduce the beta operator and uh, as their sister and certain others, you cannot. Uh, I don't think we actually have an explanation of uh, why, right? Like why? Could, could you imagine, I mean, and it, there probably should be something deeper, right? That uh, uh, it shouldn't be a complete accident. And right now it's a diacritic feature, right? Right now there is no explanation for why in the vicinity of TP, you can insert this operator, but not in the vicinity of CP. So that this is unfortunate, but it sits there. So uh, about the other thing about pipe piping. So maybe I actually, maybe I shouldn't have called it pipe piping because pipe piping suggests that it's something smaller that has the need to move and something uh, bigger moves. But I'm not, we're not, when scrambling is taking place, it's, I don't believe that it's taking place because, so the other thing is we don't know why scrambling takes place, but we are not at all suggesting that the thing, uh, the quantifier inside, is driving scrambling. So I use the scrambling metaphor, so, sorry, I use the pipe piping metaphor because I want, uh, because when you're looking at English uh, uh, crossover, we use, we talk about pipe piping and we say, let's undo the pipe piping. So uh, this is actually a very good point that you raised that at least in English, right, that movement is triggered by the thing that creates the crossover configuration. While in the Hindi situations, uh, what I call the pipe piping configuration is not, there is the quantifier uh, is not forcing that movement. It's just get coming along for the ride. So there is something conceptually different, but the important thought for us is that in our system, uh, when you're doing scrambling related movement, you have to retain the entire structure down below. So at the end of the day, you can, uh, you, the quantifier will get interpreted above, but the, the location of the quantifier is there in the trace. And that's, that's the notion, but it is, uh, I think that, so, so that's why, I mean, in some sense, we don't wanna go uh, the, cable kind of uh, uh, route because it's not that kind of scrambling. There is really no, there's, it's, the quantifier is not driving any of this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for thank you. making me see that, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, time for a uh, uh, not so long question. Uh, so Tommy Lee from University of Southern California. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for the talk. So um, I just make my question short. So uh, I um, I think I get the general idea of the talk. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just like kind of a very general question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of, yeah, please. Um, like, the, the, like the recent discussion on the composite A slash A bar mm -hmm. like uh, movement. And I got the impression that complicating the probe in Hindi it does not give you the picture you want. So, I mean, I, I feel like this is- Yes, yes, so, uh, yeah, you... that's, but that's a good point, yeah. And in fact, we sort of thought about that uh, a little bit. So these kinds of, in some sense, right? Like it's not quite, so yeah. So could, could one just say that this is a movement which I think, uh, if one complicates the probe, one would have to complicate 
it's not clear to me that the probe uh, complicating the probe by itself would give us what we need, which is that the lower part, we want it to be, as I said, right, like this mythical beast, right? We want it to be one animal down below and another animal up above. And complicating the probe uh, uh, to be both uh, A and A bar, um, I'm not, because the cases that people have looked at, um, I think some of these cases involve like you do A bar movement, but then you can get case above. And this is not uh, uh, that kind of a situation. You're not, you're, it's almost the reverse. You're not getting case uh, um, in the higher location. You're, you're already done with case. But I, I think this is a good thing for us to uh, uh, clarify, right? To just to, because that technology exists uh, to make sure that there is no tweak. I think there isn't, but I'm, I cannot, uh, prove it for you right now. I will, I will think about this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, thank uh, uh, Rajesh Bhatt one more time. Uh, uh, thank you for the talk. And the recording will now stop. <laughs>